CBR Enriken operators, some call them chem warriors, who push forward deeply into possibly contaminated or hostile territory, probably are doing one of the most demanding jobs we can imagine. They must operate out there for hours, possibly even days, in total autonomy and without ever breaking the seals of their heavy hermetically sealed protective equipment. Heavy breathing through the multi-layer protective filter attached to their gas mask, the issue of increased sweating inside the rubberized protective suit and the risk of dehydration due to this loss of liquid from their body make their missions a physically most demanding task. But even when returning to his base or unsecure outpost of his unit, the CBRN Recon operator can not just step out of his heavy equipment. The risk of exterior contamination of his protective equipment requires the CBRN operator to go through a strict decontamination procedure and to respect an exactly determined sequence when unloading from his heavy equipment. Generally the decontamination team of his unit should help the operator to go through this process. But of course any CBRN Recon operator must be able to securely unload from his equipment on his own as well. This might be required in case his unit or its outpost have been extinguished when he returns from the so-called hot zone. Other possible situations are those of a hostile capture when the operator has to step out of his protective combat uniform as a prisoner in the enemy's camp. In this sequence operators at squad is performing the process of unloading without any external help. We will learn about the stress and effort imposed and how the already exhausted operator can reduce the risk of contamination during this process. The procedure requires the CBRN operator to unload from all the equipment externally worn on top of the hermetically sealed Zodiac suit first and before breaking any seal of the hermetically sealed rubberized liner of the zodiac suit or unscrewing the filter from his gas mask. This method of conduct is possible thanks to the fact that the zodiac personal protective equipment does not comprise a tank based breathing system. As we can see, Zed Squad first puts off his external cut protection gloves which prevent damage to the gas tight rubber gloves underneath when out in the combat zone. Next the Recon operator unloads from specific Recon equipment such like his binoculars. Furthermore a great relief of course is to drop the heavy combat backpack used for such long range Recon missions. Next the operator can take off the heavy splinter proof ballistic vest he had to wear around his torso while on mission in order to protect his body from smaller projectiles and splinters. As we can see from these pictures, the operator still has the multi-layered filters attached to his gas mask, thus he is still fully protected from any CBRN hazards. Be it from a sudden enemy attack or from an external contamination of his own equipment. Now Zed Squad unloads from the bag containing his Recon camera equipment which was fixed to his body underneath the splinter proof jacket. Next it is to remove some remaining ballistic protective equipment, first the knee pads worn to protect the zodiac pants. Now the operator puts off his combat helmet with attached headphones for both noise protection and radio communication. To start breaking the seals of the hermetically sealed zodiac suit, the operator has to unleash the straps which tightly fixed the suit's seals to his body.
Now he will open the wrap closure around his waist which was the gas tight connection of the zodiac's torso part and the adjacent rubber pants. After opening up the waist seal of the protective suit, the operator has to remove the gas mask filter. Only then he can detach the suit's hood from the gas mask. There are three holes in the suit's hood which exactly fit to the two visor glasses and the filter adapter of the M65Z gas mask. Thus the gas mask itself can only be lifted after the operator undressed from the hood permanently attached to the Zodiac's torso part. As we can see, lifting the torso part is the most difficult phase in stepping out of the Zodiac equipment. CBRN Recon Operators at Squad conducts this operation without detaching the rubber gloves from the Zodiac's arms. Undressing would be much easier after detaching those rubber gloves first, since this would allow to use the normal sense of touch and the increased mobility of his ungloved hands. But this would cause the danger of touching the contaminated outside of the suit with his unprotected hands. Therefore our CBRN operators are ordered to undress without detaching the gloves and have to train this difficult procedure. We must consider the torso part of the suit does not slip off easily, since it often sticks to the sweat soak and undersuit worn by the operator. It is most important for the operator not to panic when he pulled his masked head and face into the torso of the suit and is struggling to move the suit over his back and head. This can be quite an issue since the operator of course is in a most exhausted state from his long range mission in the contaminated zone and naturally only has the desire to get out of the heavy, hot and sweaty zodiac suit as soon as possible. At this point, the CBRN operator once again has to overcome such natural desires to execute the undressing through the correct and drill trained procedure. Now it is the moment the operator can lift the gas mask which has been tightly pressed to his face during the entire mission. In this case, operators at squad returned from a short mission of only two hours, but the gas mask anyhow has left deep imprints around his face. We apologize we cannot show further details of the operator's face to the audience due to confidentiality reasons. At this point of the undressing process the operator is allowed to drink from a water bottle the first time since he stepped into the suit prior to his mission. Having only had a limited hydration supply from his carry-on reservoir and through the special gas mask liquid adapter, this is always experienced by our CBRN Recon operators returning from their long-range missions as a great relief. You may notice the dark green color of the operator's one-piece undersuit. In fact this is caused by the fact this suit is fully soaked with the operator's own sweat after only two hours of operating in the Zodiac Ensemble. It is on this undersuit where we find the only hint to the operator's nationality, in this case German. This information is hidden inside the protective suit to prevent a different treatment of several CBRN operators in multinational recon teams by either comrades from other units or, in case of being captured, by enemy forces. We furthermore can see that Squad is trying to wash away the salty crust from his face which has been caused from his own sweat accumulating inside the gas mask while he operated in fully hermetic protective posture. Finally the operator will step out of the Zodiac suit's pants and the attached rubber boots. He can, 
without any danger of contamination, grab those dungaree style pants at the upper end which during his mission has been sealed inside the torso part of the suit. However, getting his feet out of the boots without touching the boots themselves, especially on their outside, is not an easy task. The operator has to proceed carefully and is is most recommended to all CBRN operators to improve the results through regular drill and training. To learn more on our research and our ongoing efforts to improve the CBRN long range recon operators endurance and combat readiness, stay tuned to this channel.